Welcome again. In this video and the next video, we will be learning how to transform numerical variables into categorical variables. This process is usually called binning or discretization. Uh, we have two paradigms of binning or discretization. In this video, we'll cover one of them and we'll give an example, which is uh, the entropy based binning. And in the next video, we'll cover the other paradigms and take two examples. Now before we continue, let's remind ourselves of uh, where we are. We're still here converting or transforming numerical variables into categorical variables. Now, what is binning? Binning or discretization is the process of transforming numerical variables into categorical counterparts. An example is to bin values for age, for example, into categories or groups. So instead of having uh, uh, age just as numbers, we can have it as groups, age groups, between 20 and 39, between 40 and 59, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, this is this process or binning or discretization is usually done in uh, modeling methods or in machine learning uh, machine learning algorithms, which are based on frequency tables. One example is decision trees. We'll come to that when we cover how machine how data mining and machine learning algorithms in the next tutorial not the next video notice in the next tutorial moreover binning may improve the accuracy of the predictive models it actually reduces the noise and it also allows easy identification of outliers invalid and missing values of the numerical variable now uh, notice now we have numerical values i.e. continuous so when we say continuous or numerical they are uh, the same thing people usually use these words uh, interchangeably so now we have continuous variable we convert it or transform it into categorical into sort of discrete rather than continuous now the smiley face and the sad face are upside down my two daughters wouldn't be happy about this so two types of binning uh, supervised and unsupervised in this video we'll be covering the supervised binning and we'll give one example the supervised binning these methods they transform numerical variables into categorical variables and refer to the target or the class information when selecting discretization cut points so notice here we need to select cut points so we can have groups or categories yes and we do this by referring to the class one example is entropy based binning uh, here I'm assuming you know what entropy is basically it's just a, a measure of uncertainty and it's very easy to compute entropy based binning this method uh, this method uses a split approach so again we need to sort of choose the best cut points and create our categories or groups accordingly the entropy or the information content is calculated based on the class label so remember we also re we always refer to the class in supervised binning and in entropy based binning in particular now the intuition behind it the way it works is it actually finds the best split so that the bins are as pure as possible what do we mean by pure bins well what that means is that the majority of the values in a bin correspond to have the same class label so one bin will to the best of our ability we try to make every bin has only one class label only again to the best of our ability because that's not always possible so formally this is characterized by finding the split with the maximal information gain now all of this will make sense when we have an example and our example now is about some functionality about o-ring o-ring is a sort of uh, a plastic seal that has the shape of an O and it's usually used to prevent leakage now what we have here is a small data set of temperatures so numerical variable and a categorical variable or the class now and for every temperature we have the class whether the o-ring fails or not so yes means the o-ring fails i.e. the leakage happens and no means the o-ring stays intact and no leakage and again we have temperatures and corresponding classes yes or no 53 56 57 and so on and so forth and then yes the fail happens and no the o-ring stays intact now let's discretize the temperature variable using the entropy based binning algorithm 
Now the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the entropy for the target. The way we, we do that is we calculate the entropy which is the summation of minus p log to base 2 p. p here is the probability so what we do is we build a, a frequency table of all the class values for yes and no I'm sorry so in order to compute the entropy what we do is we build a frequency table of the class variable and we use it to sum over all the values of the class variable for the O-ring failure now we have 7 value of yes and 17 values of no the count is done from here notice now the overall is 24 7 plus 17 now the probability of yes would be 7 over 17 and the probability of no would be I'm sorry 7 over 24 7 plus 17 and the probability of no would be 17 over 24 now the entropy of failure we just plug that in it's the entropy of the 7 and 17 the two values of the class or the two categories of the class variable uh, 7 over 24 is 0 0.29 17 over 24 is 0 0.71 and what we do now is we just plug that in with the probability by the way the minus there is because uh, the probability is always between 0 and 1 and the log to base 2 of any number less than 1 will be negative that's why we have the negative there so they cancel out each other so minus 0 0.29 times log to base 2 0 0.29 minus 0 0.71 log to base 2.71 and if you do that using your calculator you end up with 0.871 now what we do is the next step is to calculate the entropy for the target given a bin so what we do is let's say for example we want to split or want to have uh, a category for temperatures less than or equal 60 and another category for above 60 what we do now is we build another uh, frequency table for the two values of the class for less than or equal 60 we have three yeses and one no for above 60 we have four yeses and one uh, and 17 no's <coughs> so the probability of less than or equal 60 would be 3 the summation of this row 3 over the overall or the grand sum so 3 over 24 and probability of over 60 is 21 which is 4 plus 17 over the grand sum the overall number which is here um, 24 so tw 21 over 24 now we calculate the entropy for failure and temperature which is the probability of less than equal 60 times the entropy for 3 and 0 now and we know how to compute the entropy using exactly the same approach by calculating probabilities of each one and then using the log and summing the minus p log p for all the values so again probability of less than equal 60 times entropy of 3 and 0 plus probability of uh, above 60 times the entropy of 4 and 17 this is this actually this equation for target given a bin uh, uh, the entropy of s and a is the summation of the probability of uh, that target which is here I'm sorry th that bin which is here less than equal 60 and above 60 this is the probability of that bin which we calculated here and that is the entropy we sum over all the values of or all over all bins and we end up with this number here if you plug that in by the way for example here the entropy of 3 and 0 will be 0 so you notice here for example 3 over 24 times 0 entropy of 3 and 0 will be 0 the reason is that uh, if we calculate the probability of n in this here will be 0 over 3 0 over the summation of this row so that will be 0 and then the probability of yes will be 3 over 3 which is 1 log to base 2 of 1 is 0 and we, that's why we end up with 0 you do, your, you do it yourself calculate the uh, entropy of 4 and 17 would be 4 over 21 and 17 over 21 for the two values of the probability and you use your calculator you end up with this number here 0.6125 now we calculate the third step is to calculate the information gain with given a bin which is the entropy of the target minus entropy of the target given a bin we have these two values if we go back to the previous slides this is the entropy for the target we've done it 0.871 and this is the entropy for the target given a bin 0.6125 you subtract that 
and you end up with this value here now what we can do here is if you remember uh, from previous slides we mentioned that um, we choose the best split so we can try diff different bins and we choose the one that gives us back the highest information gain again going back to the slide we look for the maximal maximal information gain so the split that gives us the maximal information gain we've tried less than equal 60 and above 60 we can try less than 70 and above 70 less than less than or equal 75 above 75 and we if we do that using our calculators we find out that the information gains for all three pins show that the best interval for temperature is less than equal 60 above 60 why it be it's because it returns the highest information gain just looking at the values here this is the data set that we had before and we have intervals less than equal 60 above 60 less than equal 70 above 70 less than equal 75 above 75 and the information gains as you can see are these values again we choose the one that gives us the highest information gain and we split accordingly now I'm going to stop here thank you very much for watching in the next video I'll be covering the second approach of how to transform numerical variables into categorical variables or binning Thanks again and I'll see you next time.